We're just gonna go over a problem. Um, it's from Musico. I did not write it. So yeah, I guess we'll just read over the whole thing first. So we have basically a bunch of cows um, and they're in this 2D grid. And we know that there's almost 2,500 cows. Okay, so now what we want to do is build a fence. Um, it's kind of, I guess you could think of it like a little box that contains some subset of cows. And what we're trying to do is find the number of distinct subsets of cows that we can enclose where like this box is um, a rectangle with sides parallel to the X and Y axes. And um, yeah, they also say that you should include the empty subset. So uh, yeah, the input format, basically our coordinates are going to be pretty big, but there's only 2,500 cows, so we should be able to deal with it. Um, and then given all of the locations of our n cows, we just count how many subsets we can enclose. So I think for this problem, the idea is pretty interesting and might be a little bit hard to think of. Um, also, like the sample output, the explanation they give for it is a little bit misleading because as you like see here, they start with two to the fourth, which is 16. So that's the total number of subsets. And they're saying we just subtract the ones that aren't possible. Um, and since this number can be very big, I guess that's a clue as to this approach of taking the total and like subtracting some um, property when like it doesn't work is not really going to be a viable solution because we have such a big like range that we could get. Um, yeah, so first, usually when you get a problem, you kind of just think a little bit about what you can say about these uh, rectangles in this case. So if we look at a rectangle, um, we're trying to like characterize this box or fence in terms of the cows that determine it. If you, I guess you could say like that, but basically if we have like a bunch of cows enclosed by it. What we want to do is characterize this rectangle by the ones that are on the edges of the rectangle. So like this rectangle is determined by this point, this point, and this point. And everything inside, once we have like the determining cows, is just going to be looped in to the rectangle so they're not really that important um yeah so once we think about this i guess one thing you could do is you can see that like there has to be a determining cow if that makes sense on each of the four sides of the rectangle so there doesn't have to be exactly four but like you can see that this side has this cow, this side has this cow, and these two sides are both determined by this cow in the corner. Uh, we could also have something like this, obviously. But we're just saying that like we can use the corners, but still each side has a determining cow on it. So 
Um, a way you could use this solution is to do something that's n to the fourth, where we just consider every possible combination of the four cows on the four sides of the rectangle, and then um, count it if it's valid. So this would be O of n to the fourth or n to the fifth if you kind of process these and determine if they're valid in a not as efficient way. But either way, these are way too big because we have 2,500 and we're usually only allowed about 10 to the eighth operations um, to be within the time limit. So if we want a complete solution, we have to think of something else. So this is where uh, a, an idea that I think comes up in silver um, is going to be really helpful. So first of all, what we're going to do is instead of kind of fixing these four sides, and then seeing if that's valid, we want to fix a smaller number of sides and then determine how many rectangles we can make with those two fixed sides in a short amount of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix two of the sides of the rectangle, two of the um, cows like that determine the edge the edges of the rectangle. So we're going to take the top and the bottom of this rectangle. And if we say like these two cows are the top and the bottom, then we can basically find how many um, cows like determine the left and the right. And then just add it up for every n squared combination of the two cows on the top and the bottom. Okay, so now we have to find how many rectangles use this cow and this cow as the top and bottom determining cows. So for example, we would need like one cow over here and one cow over here. Um, but we know that these cows can't be like outside of this kind of long stretch of rectangle, if that makes sense. So they can't be out here. And um, they also can't be in here because that means that they're not really determining the sides. So, yeah. We're trying to count like a bunch of rectangles, which means that we need something to be really efficient. Since we're already fixing these two, that's O of N squared. And that's pretty much only what we're allowed. So we should try to do something that's in O of 1 now to count how many rectangles there are with these two as the top and bottom. And the way we do that is um, by using prefix sums. So prefix sums are really useful and I guess I'll just explain with a very small example but let's say we have this array and we want to find the sum of a contiguous subarray so like basically a continuous subset of these numbers and we're going to have a bunch of different queries so like, for example, this, and we need to be able to do this quickly because if we're going to have like n queries and the length is n, then if we just go and like say one for this um, subset, and if we just like sum all of these up, that's going to take O of n time, and then we do this n time, so this would be O of n squared if we just did brute force. But if we use prefix sums, basically we can make this array pi 
So that PI is equal to, uh, let's call this array A, sorry about that, I didn't define it. But basically, PI is going to be A0, A1, all the way to AI summed up together. And we can compute all of these values um, using this recurrence. So like basically what this is saying is the sum of the numbers from this end to this end is going to be the same as this end to the two, and then you add the four in. So it's a pretty simple idea actually. Um, yeah, so we can see that like this problem is not in one dimension. So there is actually another basically extension of this in two dimensions. So if we have a bunch of um, numbers in like a grid and we want to say find the sum of this subgrid, then we can use the recurrence PIJ, which is going to be like, if this is I and this is J, is going to be the sum of this subgrid. So PIJ is going to be equal to PI minus one, J minus one, oh, sorry. PI minus one J plus PI J minus one. And then subtract PI minus one J minus one. So if we look at this, um, if we're taking this like subarray, we're going to basically sum up this thing and this thing. So we're like leaving a bit of it out and then subtract out this thing. Okay. Yeah, so this is how we uh, take the sum of a subgrid. And we basically just apply this to the problem. So if we have um, let's say this thing is like, oops, A, B, and C, D, those are their coordinates, then we want to find the number of different points over here and over here and just multiply them together. And if you look at this, like, let's say this is where it ends, then this is kind of like a little subgrid within like the larger grid over here. So yeah, um, I don't think I'm gonna go into the specifics, but that's the basic idea. So if you can find like, the constraints on where these points can be for the left and the right end, then we can use prefix sums to find how many points there are in here and how many points there are in here, multiply them together, and then we just add them up for every possible combination of the top and the bottom, which there are n squared of. So in total, computing the prefix sums um, has a pre-processing time of n squared. And then we can just query pretty quickly uh, using the, something similar to the thing below, but basically this would be n squared times one. So just n squared. Okay, I hope that was clear, but yeah, that's it.